May I come in, sir? Yes, come in. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Rama Kanta Reddy? Yes. What were your subjects in options? Options in forestry? Sir, I have forest and geology as my options. Forest and geology. Your DAF is, uh, IFS DAF is not available. This is uh, civil services. You have given that or? Yes, sir, I have given it. You know, okay, by mistake then. Forestry and geology. Yes. Uh, tell me something about this uh, Dikern ACs. Hmm? I find a lot of them everywhere. Whether this brand is better than many others, Indian and foreign brands, and what was your job? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, starting with my job, sir, I worked as an AC development engineer. So I was allotted to compressor department in Dikern Air Conditioners there. Uh, so I was working there as a trainee itself. Uh, before I was re uh, resigned from the job. So coming to the sales of the Daikin air conditioners, Daikin has expanded its base mm -hmm. from Japan to various other countries and recently uh, in last decade, it is aggressively promoting its brand in India. And many people in India are buying because of its relative competitiveness in terms of price and as well as the performance that Daikin gives compared to other brands. What about after sales service? Yes sir, uh, in the initial days when the Daikin entered, around 2010 to two, uh, 2010 to 2015 their after sales were not very good this they realized and now they started promoting after sales also very vigorously and they have uh, two manufacturing bases in india and after sales centers are where, where are the bases uh, so two plants are in nimrana rajasthan and one more plant they recently procured the land and start constructing in sri city of andhra pradesh okay okay <clears throat> cricket <Yeah. clears throat> Uh, I was reading somewhere that uh, some of our teams have broken 129 years record. You read that? Uh, sir, can you repeat the question? I uh, our cricket teams, one of our cricket team has broken 129 years record. Ranji Trophy. Uh, sorry sir, I haven't heard yeah. of it. I have to read. That nine half cent centuries in one innings. It was established before 129 years. Hmm? I have That's okay. <clears throat> PIL. What is PIL? Uh, sir, public interest litigation. It's, it's, it's news all the time. Uh, but uh, I, 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 I am told it has got another two more definitions. Uh, mm. Yes, sir. Uh, like even the judges themselves of Supreme Court also have sometimes called it as private interest litigation. Uh, mm. In some cases, in some cases, uh, political, political interest, interest, interest litigation. Mm -hmm. So. Be, uh, because of the cases which the court was hearing, uh, they, uh, the court felt that it, it is being used by various fact, by various actors for their own personal benefit instead of uh, using it as a tool for public interest. So, some, whether some guidelines have been issued by the Supreme Court on this? Uh, how, how to decide which case should be there? Because most of the, their time is consumed in these PILs. Uh, some of the courts are done quite good for the country. Uh, sir, uh, definitely uh, I remember that Supreme Court gave guidelines, but uh, sorry sir, I don't remember them now. I have read about it that the uh, Supreme Court has given guidelines. And so, Supreme Court was also furious yesterday that we are wasting a lot of medical seats. Uh, medical seats already dearth in India. That's why people are students going to Ukraine and many other countries. But last year, I think we wasted some seats. Any idea? Uh, no sir. Sorry. More than 1,500 seats have been wasted, not utilized. Sorry sir, I am not aware of uh, Which is the uh, most important carbon sink? And can you tell me first, second, third? When we say carbon sink, we have carbon sink. Which is the first one, second one, third one? Uh, sir, uh, carbon is it sinks. about ecosystem wise? Ah, ecosystem wise. Ecosystem. Uh, yes sir. Sir, coral ecosystems mangrove ecosystems mm -hmm. and uh, when it comes to equatorial forest the equatorial forest ecosystems so these are the top three uh, carbon sinks on the terrestrial terrestrial uh, sir in terrestrial the uh, first is uh, wetlands and uh, littoral swamps and wetlands uh, no otherwise oceans are the first most uh, important uh, carbon sinks second comes soil yes sir third will be what Forest. Yes, sir. Hmm? I mean, in terms of forest, but uh, overall, uh -huh. uh -huh. forest. Yes, sir. Okay. 
see we see lot of big big advertisements in newspapers and newspapers also very very thick and cost is only 5 rupees 6 rupees how they survive and some are lot of photographs glossy paper but we get it very cheap and that much money we earn also in selling the papers uh, sir because most of the newspapers they earn their revenue by ad ads advertisements mm. uh, so in these big big newspapers which we see majority of the pages will be promoting various institutes or various advertisements of different uh, types so they earn majority of their revenue and the 5 rupees or whatever amount which we are paying is almost negligible for uh, their cost which which they print by the newspapers it is just to ensure that wide uh, base is there and we read all those things eh? yes sir it makes more affordable for each and every person uh, to buy their newspaper yes. all right uh, thank you ready yes sir so you are from kadapa yes sir what has been the state of uh, jadav persons uh, trying to yes sir locate uh, sir it is a critically endangered bird which lives in grasslands uh, it was last scientifically and uh, Accurately, it was cited in 1986, around 1986, by Jagannathan, who was very interested in doing the research of Jadam's course. And again, he tried a lot, uh, and various other teams, even from uh, BNHS, have uh, came and tried to find the bird. In around 2009, 8 and 9, there were two. Uh, sorry, 1986, it was found by Jagannathan. He photographed it uh, during that time. I'm not sure, I'll find it out. Yeah, what else? Uh, and again, 2008 and 9, there were few more people who came and. Uh, uh, vigorously tried to find that bird. They didn't find any images of it, but uh, two people say that they have sighted it and they found the uh, voice of that from their uh, acoustic center, which, uh, which they installed. Uh, but it is up to debate. Many uh, doesn't agree with them. Mm. Should, uh, do you think it should be declared an extinct species? Uh, sir, I feel there is no concrete evidence as of now. People, because uh, we have to verify the facts, which the people found in 2008 and 9. Mm. And moreover, uh, during that time, there was a canal which was constructed, which was going through the sanctuary. And uh, many, various people, uh, environmentalists argue that it is because of this destruction of its habitat, we are uh, completely losing that species. So I think it should be that destruction should be stopped and further research has to be done to find, uh, investigations have to be done to find that bird. What is that bird called locally? Uh, sir, Kalevi Kodi, mm. Telugu. What is Kadapa stones? Uh, sir, Kadapa stones in general terminology in the locals use refers to the that limestone which is locally available, sir. Granite, uh, black, blackish colored, black to grayish colored granite and limestone which are found in Kadapa. Why is it become so famous? Sir, it is uh, extensive, extensively used uh, both for locally, the people use it for construction purposes and it's also used by the cement industries which are in and around Kadapa regions. Mm -hmm. Now, you are uh, UPSC. What is the address of UPSC? Uh, sir, it is in Shah Jahan Road, New Delhi. That's all. Dolpur House. Dolpur House. Yeah. Dolpur House. Now, Dolpur is a place in Rajasthan. Why is that uh, address in uh, Delhi? Uh, sorry, sir, I am not aware of Okay. That. Have you heard about Dolpur stones? Uh, I haven't heard about it, sir. But there is one competitive stone for Kadapa stone from Rajasthan area. Uh, I think it might be from Dholpur region, but I am not sure of this. Mm -hmm. Cities have become major hotspots for uh, climate change. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. Uh, I agree with that statement. Uh, mainly because of uh, the cities are acting as urban heat islands and they are aggravating the climate uh, parameters in and around the region. Mm -hmm. so. so, what should we do about it? Because uh, most of the cities in India are very congested. Yes. We are having a lot of urban space and climate change vulnerable vulnerable sec region. So, what should we do about it? Uh, sir, firstly, when it comes to existing cities, uh, we have to make it more greener uh, and make it more neutral when it comes to carbon emissions. Sir. Retrofitting of the buildings and planning innovative uh, and new technologies. For example, Miyawaki forestry is one method which can be aggressively uh, implemented in various urban cities right now. And all those new buildings which are coming up in the urban cities, if they are made uh, to be compliant to zero emission norms or use, usage of green technologies, uh, further promotion of natural ventilation so that the 
demand for energy reduces naturally so if these measures are taken to certain extent we can definitely reduce the demand of a energy demand of a city and make it more green in uh, there is a model by ahmedabad is called ahmedabad model in context to this are you aware of it uh, that is green roofing okay so india may had a challenge on green roofing not aware no, i haven't heard of this is uh, a vehicle last question from my said uh, this uh, vehicle or pollution is a major issue yes sir and uh, should uh, is a co2 a pollutant uh, according to our classification of air quality index sir uh, co2 is not considered as a pollutant in air quality index but mm. it is a greenhouse gas we consider it as should we classify it as an air pollutant uh, sir i am not very aware of it uh, it definitely causes greenhouse effect but uh, i am not very sure of its uh, harmful impact directly on human health what are the other uh, air quality index there are eight parameters yes. as a mechanical engineer do you think any other parameter should be included uh, uh sir, no sir i uh, as of uh, as of now i can think of only those eight parameters i am not aware of any other harmful gases which are all right and lead is a one of the parameters yes. where yes. do you get lead from in the air uh, sir uh, in my limited awareness i think it comes from the nuclear power plant but i am not very sure of any other sources from where lead comes all right thank you thank you sir okay <clears throat> ramakant you appeared for the civil service also yes sir. interview yes sir uh, what was the the outcome of the uh, sir uh, finally i didn't get selected i got 160 in my civil services interview 160 160 Okay. Why you want to join forest service? You know forest service. Uh, sir, uh, I was right from the start when I started this preparation. I was interested in both the services, uh, Indian administrative service as well as Indian forest service. Primarily because both of them help me in dealing with the people at the grassroots level, and uh, an Indian forest service specifically provides me that opportunity to be part of both the development as well as conservation. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I have been okay. applying for both the exams at this time. Tell me something about Kudappa specialty of the district. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Sir, geographically, Kudappa district uh, is a amalgamation of two different type of uh, geophysical regions. One is it has mountains and forests on one uh, east northeastern corner of the district, and the western part of the district is arid to semi-arid in uh, nature. Mm -hmm. uh, geographically, it is so very unique, and uh, different types of disasters are there, so it becomes very challenging for an administrator to manage. Mm. Okay, what type of forest uh, you get in uh, Andhra? Uh, sir, majorly uh, five different types of forests uh, are available mm -hmm. in Andhra Pradesh. Sir. One is uh, dry deciduous forests, which is spread in a vast region. Mm -hmm. Then moist deciduous forests, littoral and swamp forests, uh, scrub forests, as well as dry evergreen forests. These are the five major types of forests. Okay, please tell uh, important uh, tree species you find in uh, Andhra. Yes, so one is azadi directa indica mm -hmm. neem is uh, very widely available in andhra pradesh mm -hmm. other than this uh, pterocarpus red santanellus that is red sanders is grown in seshachalam hills uh, then the coastal part of andhra pradesh we find uh, sorry sir i am able no to correct find yes, so uh, tell something about the fauna also yes sir uh, Jordan scorcher, Great Indian bustard, in when it comes to avian species, both these critically endangered species are uh, found in Andhra Pradesh. Mm -hmm. Other than this, tigers are found in Nagarjuna Sagar Tree Salem mm -hmm. Tiger Reserve. Mm -hmm. Then it is also blessed with elephants uh, in southern part of Andhra Pradesh. Mm -hmm. uh, then pelicans, uh, pelicans are flamingos. These are some of the other avian fauna found. Okay, what is the status of red sanders tree in uh, Andhra? Why it is uh, so important? Why it is smuggled? Yes. Uh, its option is also a problem and all these things you know understand uh, sir firstly there is high demand in the foreign countries for the red sander tree sir especially in the countries like uh, japan china where it is used for making furniture and uh, musical instruments it's in high demand from the foreign countries when it comes to supply side because of its peculiar uh, growing conditions it is found only in the seshachalam hills sir so this made it uh, a very high in demand species uh, all over the world so the government had a policy that uh, any private individual any farmer if he wants to grow or cut and sell that tree so he has to get a license from the 
government itself. So this made it very difficult for people to grow and cut it and sell mm-hmm. it in the market. So mm-hmm. this has given rise to huge smuggling from the local places where people started smuggling it illegally. Okay, why the coastal conservation is very important, keeping in view the climate change situation and the the, the storms and all all the things are disturbing. Yes. So what types of uh, plant species you uh, use for the coastal con- uh, conservation in Andhra? Uh, sir, coastal conservation is very of very prime importance, sir, mm-hmm. because nearly 40% of entire India's population lives within 100 kilometers from the coastal area. Mm. Secondly, coastal uh, areas have high threats from various climate type disasters, mm. be, uh, including tsunamis, cyclones, as well as frequent flash floods. Uh, so it becomes of even more importance to conserve the ecosystem. So promotion of mangrove forest, which I feel are the lifeline to protect the coastal ecosystem, so as to reduce the damage of any incoming disasters, is of very high importance. Sir. Mm-hmm. So even in the state of Andhra Pradesh, the coastal region is blessed with high amount of mangroves. Uh, Other than mangrove, if you go in for plantation activity, yes, sir. what species you recommend for that? Uh, Sir, can I take a few moments? Sure. Uh, sorry, sir. There is one specific species which I am trying to recall, but I am unable to recollect. Which is Pra- uh, sir, Casuarina equisitifolia. Mm-hmm. This okay. Andhra Pradesh government is promoting yeah, yeah. vigorous Casuarina plantation. Okay. Uh, my last question. Yes, uh, uh, livelihood is very important. Yes. Uh, uh, keeping in view the the poverty and the tribal population and all these things. And uh, our government of India is trying to uh, to double the income of farmers. How you see the potential of white evo- white revolution in context of increasing because it is a coastal area. Yes, sir. How deep we can go in the the, the sea for fishing activities? Yes, sir. How how uh, how many kilometer nautical miles we can enter into the uh, yes, the sea for fishing activities? Uh, Sir, we can go to uh, at least till 12 nautical miles, which comes directly under the control of uh, the Indian government as well as the state can go up to there. Mm-hmm. So till 12 nautical miles, definitely the fisherman can go and fish. But at the same time, uh, though livelihood is very important, we also need to take care of the sustainability of the fishing ecosystem. So because various uh, methods which are used by the fishermen, because of lack of knowledge or lack of available technology. So they used unsustainable fishing techniques in some of the areas like cyanide fishing also is used. Bottom trawling is used in some cases. So I think m- making a balance between these two, promoting the newer technologies and promoting fishing in a sustainable manner till 12 nautical miles and promoting the new methods which Niti Ayak also proposed like cage farming uh, and promoting uh, in areas where ornamental fishing in some of the areas. Uh, can be looked into so to strike a balance between both these sides. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> uh, suppose you get Andhra Pradesh cadre yes, and you are uh, given the responsibility of carrying out afforestation in Andhra Pradesh. How will you devise the policy? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, so f- firstly, I will look into the area where uh, the afforestation is need to be done, that uh, geographical climate of it, the availability of water and type of soil. So this gives me a fair idea of what type of species are best suited. So I will try to focus mainly on the native species which are already available. So looking into the history of the region. So if it comes into the uh, arid region of Andhra Pradesh, so focusing on Azadi Recta Indica or uh, uh, Tectona Grandis in uh, western part of Andhra Pradesh or when it comes to coastal region then Casuarina species. So depending upon that uh, local conditions, and also seeing the demands uh, where the uh, like local people, for example, if it is in a uh, area where tribals are uh, living, so I will try to interact with them and see what species they want. Because at the end of the day, if the tribals are actively participating uh, for promotion of uh, non-timber forest produce, so they will also be stakeholders in looking after the trees in the future. So these factors I would consider and uh, see. What do you think the trees will be suitable for them? Your guess yes, or your analysis? Uh, sir, in Andhra Pradesh, when it comes to non timber forest produce, so uh, there is a tree which locally is called Kamanchi, but uh, sorry, sir, I don't know its scientific name. It is very highly used when it comes to when it comes as non timber forest produce. So, apart from this, they also use Tamarindus indica and Mangifera indica, uh, which are uh, 
widely existent in Andhra Pradesh. So these are some of the trees which I could think of as a tree. Okay. Uh, now recently there has been a trend of increasing the use of word ESG. Have you heard of this term, especially in the context of private sector companies? Uh, sorry, sir, I haven't heard of it. Yes. Okay. Anyways, uh, how has been the monsoon pattern this year till now? Uh, sir, the monsoon this year had an early entry. It was at least projected by uh, the uh, IMD that it will be an early monsoon this year. Uh, so when I was even staying in Hyderabad, we had pre-monsoon showers very early this time. But post that, post the pre-monsoon showers, again we had a very dry phase and very hot and humid phase, uh, where we didn't had any uh, rains. Will we seeing a deficit this year, rainfall deficit? Uh, sir, according to IMD, there will be no. Uh, it is projecting that there will be not a very huge deficit as such, so it will be a normal monsoon year. Okay, all right. How to increase the environmental awareness among the youth? Uh, sir, I feel uh, the first step should start from the education itself. So our education, uh, be starting from the schooling education, so it is mostly of complete bookish type of knowledge where the people are uh, being provided very less uh, non-curricular knowledge. So having nature camps or eco-tourist camps or some plantation drives at the school level where children themselves are promoted to plant a tree or adopt a tree. So along with that, uh, having uh, uh, having uh, school gardens in areas where it is possible will definitely help spreading awareness among the children at the ground level secondly when it comes to the youth uh, or the people who are in already in college level uh, having some advertisements which make them uh, not just from a commercial angle but which make them sensitive towards the environment making them feel that the environment is something which we, without which we can't live so such type of advertisements uh, in, in the usage of social media would definitely help in changing the perception of youth. Okay. okay. You are from Kadappa. Yes, sir. So why is Kadappa stone popular? Uh, sir, Kadappa stone is uh, popular because it is uh, it because of its strong uh, because of its hardness. It is very tough to break Kadappa stone. So it is widely used in the local housing industry there. And it is also because of its uh, properties, it is used in cement industry. Also. What about the cost also? Sir, the cost is also very cheap because of its high abundance over there in Karpa region. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir.